Hello, and welcome to yet another cast. For you today, I have a custom 4v4 played on uh, Saturn's Clutch. Once again, back to this map. We have, as per always, team 1 up in the north, team 2 down the bottom. I think the usual setup is that uh, team 1 is in the bottom on Saturn's, but sometimes you can see teams switched up based on the kind of auto team set is used. Anyway, let's start introducing the players, and let's start on the Rock Slot for the Northern team in the Sfecal Brown. Going Aeon, opening first air on the Rock Slot, as already pointed out, we have Resistance. Then to the north of that, in red, also going Aeon and opening first land on the air slot, we have Protect. To the west of that, took me a moment, uh, there in dark blue. Going UEF, opening first land, we have Orant. And last player of the Northern team in the Sriggle Purple. Also going Aeon, we have Kuva Klimaklever, opening first land and already moving towards the middle as is expected from the front player. Now, for the Southern team, once again starting on the Rock Slot. In grey and opening first air as Seraphim, we have Nori. Then to the south of that, in orange, going Aeon, opening first land. On the air slot we have Folly. On the beach slot to the east, in yellow, op um, opening first air as UEF, we have Leon Killer. And last but not least, in the middle, going Aeon in blue, and opening first land we have Fat Hamster. Now, Folly already pointing out that um, uh, Leon Killer is basically just there to die because if we look at the way this uh, game is balanced, we are, uh, we are looking at a mirror balance situation, meaning that um, high rated players are on the respective rock slots, with Nori at 2500 and Resistance at 2200, facing off against much lower rated players with Orant in the Northern team at 1100 and Leon Killer at 1200. Which, funnily enough, still means that um, the balance or the ratings on the southern pond are much closer. I think it would probably have been better to have um, Leon Killer up in the northern pond, though. To be fair here, I don't think it would have made a difference at all. In my opinion, the best solution here would have been to put them, the two players up against each other instead of going for mirror balance, because I'm not a big fan of mirror balance, to be honest. You just have that side, uh, you just have both sides collapse um, in the opposite directions. Now, other big writing things we have Kuva um, uh, Klima Kleber at 2k against uh, Fat Hamster at 1400. Big writing mismatch there in the middle. And, well, Folly at 2300 against Protect at 2200. Pretty close there. What I would expect to see is uh, that um, basically. We have southern, um, the southern pond and mid collapse um, downward, so that two, uh, those two players push up while this front, or um, while Nori pushes up, um, f uh, actually manages to collapse their opponent. Uh, but we would still be looking at a situation with two players winning their lanes on the northern team, while only one is winning their, uh, their respective lane on the southern team, which is a big ma uh, mismatch. Now, talking about balance, didn't talk much about the map. It is Saturn's Clutch, most players will know it. Interestingly enough, APD has been built by Fat Hamster in the middle to force uh, Kuva Klima Kleber back a bit, who has started a gun speed upgrade now. Though it's already down into the yellow. But the thing is, Saturn's, you have big uh, clumps of reclaim in the middle. Due to that, the uh, um, beach players usually go, uh, go there as well to get the uh, that fast, as well as the front players, to just grab as much reclaim as possible. Though Orant, as the northern beach player, not actually bothering to go mid. Other big thing, you have these side islands with five maxes, usually dropped by the rock players. Sometimes try to be denied by the beach players, though, with the rock um, players being the highest rated players in this game. I don't expect that to happen here. And in fact, it did not happen. Now, if we go back into the middle, Gunspeed has finished for Kuma, uh, for uh, Kuba Klimakleber. And th with that upgrade, that ACU for uh, Fat Hamster is losing HP at a very alarming rate. There is a bunch, uh, there are a bunch of Phobos right here, but 
I wouldn't be surprised if that gun upgrade is enough to take out the ACU of that hamster. Or at least force a trade. And a trade can, re uh, can definitely be forced here. But Fat Hamster does go down into the red, below 2k HP, continues to take more fire, but so does Kuva Klimakleber at around uh, just dropping below 3k HP. Both ACUs into the red, but Kuva Klimakleber above the critical 2.5k HP and thus surviving the ACU explosion of Fat Hamster. Meaning that the um, southern team already down one player with their front. This was to be expected due to the big rating disadvantage and basically the situation I already predicted uh, that the mid would collapse due to the rating. Though I can definitely promise I do check my replays beforehand, I do make sure that they are still interesting and all I can say, the game will still be interesting. Let's just put it like that. For all the wrong reasons I'd say. Or maybe all the right reasons, taking your definition. It's higher to players, so it's definitely gonna be some shenanigans. Now Kuva Klimakleber also very low from that um, from taking out the ACU, of course. Bel uh, down below 500 HP now, being worked on by Leon Killer, but just about manages to get into the water and thus survives. Not sure if those work ground fire attempts or if that ACU was just sticking out a bit, but looking at that, those work ground fire attempts to get the ACU. Which did not succeed because ACU, uh, the ACU gun does not have that much splash. With an overcharge on the other hand, that could have been very different. As the overcharge does have quite a bit of splash. But Leon Killer gets a Salem Rack and is now dealing with the remaining spam of Klima Kleber and... Would you look at that, those Auroras actually all named. Now, this is of course played with full share, unsurprisingly. Most games today are, uh, or nowadays, and the base did get gifted over to Nori as the highest rated player. Also, unsurprisingly. And Leon Killer also already taking a lot of fire now from the spam of Kuba. Being forced into the water as well. Now, things do slow down for the moment with that. With Nori now also getting up some spam on the front, to, uh, but instead of trying to push into the, into this stuff right here, just setting up a bit of a more frontline position, reinforcing uh, the radar position right here, and well, just staying there for the moment. Bunch of attack bolts out for resistance. Interesting call to go for attack bolts, I'd say, especially sending those uh, forward. Not sure why that is, maybe uh, I'm not sure if they are much cheaper and just used as a scouting unit for this. But Tiger Shark uh, latches onto one of those. Submarines of course being decent at dealing with frigates. The big thing is frigates can't fire back. The problem is that submarines just have abysma DPS. So you can uh, lock out your opponent with, uh, from navy if they don't go for submarines of their own, but... Well, just frigate spam does have more DPS, and if they just manage to push your naval yard and destroy that, then, then it doesn't matter either way. And those uh, submarines not really sent after the frigates take those out, so not really using that advantage right now. Never mind, never mind, those are moving in. Now, north on side, just going for a full frigate um, build. I can definitely respect that. Not a big fan of submarine builds, to be honest. They have just been too painful for me, uh, for myself in the past. And, well, Nori has two frigates, well now three, against one frigate out for Orant. I don't think it takes a mathematician to figure out that two wins against one in this situation. And as Orant does pull back, though, also building up a bunch of submarines, that will probably delay their collapse for a bit. And, well, saying that, it doesn't look like the submarines out for Leon Killer were en enough to delay the, the collapse um, that they are experiencing, as the frigates 
uh, for resistance have now pulled up into the area and are starting to take out the naval factory. And, uh, one of the um, frigates does actually go down to the submarines. And another one will probably do as well, but even then there are still three more frigates and that naval factory is very, very low. But Pana also uh, being cut off and that naval factory does end up dying. Not a good start. We now also do see T2 Navy out for resistance right here. With destroyers being built, I guess those are to counter, uh, supposed to counter the Tiger Sharks. Which did decrease in number. That's only one. I think there was something like three earlier. I'm confused how that happened. I'm not sure, ca I'm not sure if the um, uh, Iron Bombers can current fire them. But, yeah, okay, they can. Iron Bombers have quite a lot of AOE, um, AOE, so I'm not too surprised about that. Was just not fully expecting that. Now, Nori doing the definitely the correct thing here, getting up some hover spam to try and help out their teammate. Always nice to see some kind of, uh, some sort of um, team play with that. Helping out teammates that are in trouble. And though you have to be careful since you can risk losing your own flank due to that. Bunch of energies being dropped to the front by Nori. I guess for reclaim purposes. And while there are a bunch of submarines right here, those will not do too well unless they get surfaced uh, against the Seraphim engineers as those are hover. And thus cannot be hit by torpedoes. And though that's a large crowd of submarines, so I would not be surprised if those two actually get surfaced. But engineers drop, immediately get started on a torpedo launcher to, I guess, to counter the submarines. Which should probably not um, really surface right now due to the frigates still being in the area. But torpedo launchers do finish. Also, a bunch of naval factories stood up right after that. And this is really, really annoying to deal with, of course, because those will be naval factories basically right on the front yard of Orange, meaning that. They will be facing very short reinforcement times. Looking at this, now also a engineer drop coming out from resistance on the southern pond. Possibly going for an analogous play. Doing the exact same. Protect asking, um, uh, wait, no. Protect saying that Nori rushes, I guess. Was to say asking, uh, uh, asking an uh, to rush, but they are not opposing teams, so probably not requesting that if that was sent on team chat. The engineers get started on their factories, and the first thing they build is actually just more engineers. But with those top launchers, the uh, submarines can't really push that too well. And there we have it just launching ridiculous amounts of torpedoes due to the large number of these top launchers. Now, the Strials do appear uh, in the south, and while the range on Aeon Strials is not as amazing as, for example, on Cyphron Strials, if I remember correctly, I, if I remember correctly, the Salem does have the highest range of any destroyer. It is still pretty decent, and it does still outrange t 2 bd which is the big uh, important thing, because that means that a investment into artillery will be necessary to counter that. But with Navy 1, I do suspect that we will also see a very a very um, uh, rapid um, jump to T3 Navy from Resistance to get up some uh, stuff like uh, Torrents or Battleships to bombard the beach. As those are very effective um, to, the, uh, to deal with artillery when the Navy is 1, due to just completely outranging that. Though just cruisers for any faction that wouldn't be Aeon, or Siphon for that matter, would also do quite well, but... Well, there are three Aeon players on the Northern team. And the one that isn't is the beach bed, uh, uh, is the beach bed that is currently collapsing. Leon Killer does decide to just capitulate, control k which I can understand and... Never mind, not even control k just disconnecting. But that is fully understandable due to just, well, the name of the situation. 
I can understand why that's happening. So, um, protect in the meantime, suggesting that Orange goes for hover, and that is definitely a very good call, as the purpose of hover is basically just to delay um, the collapse of your navy and possibly allow um, your opponents to, uh, your teammates to help out, or just push back your opponent's navy so that you can get uh, back into the navy game. The big problem we are seeing right here is that there are Seraphim destroyers out for Nori, as they do indeed play Seraphim. And Seraphim destroyers are very good at dealing with Hover due to being a. Uh, due to having a beam weapon as a primary. And beam weapons are generally very good at dealing with spam. Because, well, it's a beam, it doesn't overkill, and it quickly retargets. The ideal thing to deal with spam. Now, the net protection uh, for Arendt unsurprisingly now goes down to the increasing number of destroyers and just a large number of frigates. Wouldn't be surprised to see cruisers coming in, and well, would you look at that? There's a cruiser coming in right now. That will both help out with the current use of air to defend in a form of just AA against the top bombers. But also with the cruiser missiles, it is going to take out any kind of defenses or um, economic structures on the beach, making it, um, uh, making it even harder to get back into the navy due to the large range of these missiles. Because, wait, no, wrong player. If we look at this big yellow ring, Showing the big range of those uh, of those nasty nasty missiles. And T3 Navy look uh, sub by resistance now, as expected. Top bomber speed utilized to deal with um, uh, to deal with the Navy of resistance though, currently built up by um, Nori. And especially against Aeon Navy, that does generally work out quite well due to Aeon not having any AA on their normal ships, only getting AA on the dedicated AA ships, those being the Shouts attack boats on tier 1, cruisers on tier 2, and the aircraft carriers on tier 3. But with the presence of, build, uh, of T1 entries in the area, those can just build up the stationary AE T1 AA turrets, which why not perfect against the use of the uh, top bombers will just uh, will still do the job. Foley in the meantime starts building up a bunch of T2 RT2 just bombard the navy, trying to block them out of the bay area. Let's see how that works out. And resistance going for a very bossy play now. I think that ACU up. Is that scouted? Well, they do know that there's something here, and due to those two air units being very close, they can probably assume that that is a transport. They don't know if that's the ACU, however. It could also just be a single engineer or something like that being airlifted. Single high-tech engineer. But with that, that is going to cause even more issues for Folly since that ACU does have T3 wing that it will quickly build up um, factories. With spam factories already started, however, for resistance on the area, that is just. that is already a problem existing, I guess. No, that will just get even worse with the 8 press of the ACU there. In the meantime, landfall up here has been made by Nori. Even with T2 land now. Though, at least that's not, uh, not the HQ there. The HQ is probably in the main base. No? Uh, on the side island, then I guess. No. No, that's A on uh, T2. Where the fuck is the Sierra from T2 land HQ? If it's not on the la uh, if it's not on the expansion right here. Like, honestly, where the fuck is it? I can't rule out that I'm just blind, but. In the, main, in the main base right here, we only have T3 Air HQ, which is, of course, very nice to see T3 Air out for Nori. But no land HQ on the beach, so. Uh, on, not on the beach, on the side island, so. 
Either that died or... I don't know. That doesn't matter anymore because... Counter spam out from both Kuba and Aura and take out the land production from Nori for the time being. However, with the number of cruisers now continuing to increase, we are currently looking at three in the area with another one coming in. Never mind. Five in the area, also right here bombarding the base of Kuva. We have started building up some volcanoes, which are very effective at dealing with any kind of missiles coming in, due to being able to deal with larger numbers. And though there will be more than one volcano needed due to the um, just due to the frequency at which the missiles are fired and the non synced firing patterns. But that has been started, so the damage of that will now reduce significantly. And a few Infinity class uh, cruisers coming out for resistance, I guess, to deal with the AA situation. T3 is still underway. First unit seems to be battleship, after that, just a bunch of torrents. So, exactly what I expected. Though, to be fair, as I already pointed out, I do review these replays beforehand, so even for me it's hard to tell what I just kinda expect and what I just, well, say because I actually know what happens. Like, I do forget quite a bit of stuff about this, believe it or not, after reviewing the stuff, but yeah, sometimes also just unconsciously knowing uh, stuff. But sometimes there's definitely just a fact. I know what's going to happen and I'm going to hint at it. But anyway, land production out here for uh, resistance is um, in full swing, just producing um, uh, slabs uh, now with a bunch of artists. Now, I would understand the mass labs out from uh, Folly um, against just a mass RT out from um, resistance as labs do generally trade quite well into mobile artillery due to its high speed and easy spammability, making it basically a, a, a good counter against mobile RT. But I'm not sure why Resistance is going for the mobile RT play. Maybe just for the numbers? But honestly not too sure. I would think that just normal, uh, that if you are dealing with the mobile uh, not with the mobile, with the lab spam right here. Going for Auroras would be the better play. But I'm much lo uh, lower rated than, um, than uh, Resistance, so... What do I know? They probably have an idea behind that. In the meantime, Triad's being built up in the um, uh, base position right here by, fo uh, by falling to defend. Answer of Resistance to that is just... Some miasmas to, well, fire down into that, taking that out. Battleships now also coming out for Nori. Already three out. Bombarding the, uh, uh, currently bombarding the base of Kuva Kli uh, Klimakleber. With that heavy, heavy fire ability. Though not micro perfectly, currently in range of the um, uh, artillery installations. Big uh, thing with battleships is that they do technically outrange um, T2 artillery, making it really hard to defend against them. But it is generally a thing that I, know, I am aware that the majority of players, when bombarding beaches, does not micro sufficiently to actually utilize that. And I guess that not only applies to my comparatively low rating range uh, that I usually play in, but also the rating range of these high rated players. Probably because it's just too much of a hassle to do that. So I guess I kind of understand that. Especially because battleships are very tanky. Now the... Um, the side expansion of three maxes for uh, Folly, more well originally Leon Cologne, now Folly, has fallen to the spam of flares and. Right, I think there was also the throwdown here. 
um, just both, the combination of both taking that stuff out. And that looks like there's a, uh, there are clean cameras here, and yes. Right, right, I actually pointed out the clean cameras when they were built by Foley. In order to originally, originally defend the navy. I guess now they are also being utilized to defend against this stuff, against the firebase down here. It was erected. But with the rise of, bat uh, rise of battleships on the southern pond as well, I don't think that that will be too long left. Kuba in the meantime kept glazing on the naval ribbon, moving up a bunch of hover spam uh, over the water and onto the beach area, causing some backline damage into the frontline base, currently occupied by Nori. And well, quick, uh, quick thinking needs to PD being built up in time. But there is still a bunch of build power going down, potentially even the Omni are not threat. If that is targeted, since the Omni just uh, has just 100 HP. Since Intel units in general are not very tanky, and yes, there goes the Omni. Meaning that a South team is currently blind. Well, not completely blind, but if you look at this, the Omni made up a major part of their Intel. And they don't know much of the things that are going on anymore. Another um, start to get into land uh, now coming out for Nori. Once again with T2 land factories. And once again I will have to check where the HQ stands. No, it doesn't HQ? Ah, right. That should have been pretty obvious that the HQ would be right here on the water where you would want it for hover production. As Aeon, of uh, not Aeon, as Seraphim also gets access to the Hubble Spam. So, yeah, I guess I should have expected that to be down there. Especially because that's a common place to build land factories as the rock player due to the ability to just spam out entries there and the, necess uh, the necessity to get a bunch of build power in the area there for naval production. We do now see uh, torrents coming out for high resistance in a southern pond, bombarding what is left of the front base. Uh, is there... Currently can't see any TMD built up, never mind there is one TMD, but just um, with the amount of missiles coming out of these torrents, one TMD will not cut it, even a volcano. As the big thing with torrents is, as you can see, Missiles are not launched simultaneously, they are launched in just big volleys from the two turrets. And these two missile uh, turrets that just shoot them out at rapid rates. But strength of the volcano is dealing with many missiles that are very close by. It's not uh, at dealing with a constant stream of missiles. As, the, it, uh, as it still does have a cooldown and to counter its ability to take uh, on multiple missiles at once, missile, multiple missiles at once, it does have a lower range than other TMDs. Protect actually finishes an experimental unit. It's probably land experimental, considering the current um, attempted landfall made by Nori. And yes, it is. Just a bunch of miasmas built up by Kuba, being utilized to bombard the, uh, the land production in the area making it impossible, or well, not impossible, but very hard to actually keep the area under control. Also, land production, however, started up here in the north as well. And also with the coverage of a bunch of cruisers, making sure that there is proper air defense. And uh, there are a few signals coming in from Orient to try and do something, but... Well, those do just end up shot down by the cruisers. Now TMD in the front base does continue to increase, and this seems to be enough to deal with the current number of turrets, though there are more turrets coming in, and I'm pretty sure at some point this will no longer suffice. But if we just look at the constant stream of missiles and constant stream of uh, those jumping um, flares being produced by the volcanoes, then yeah, currently it does work, but you can see how ridiculous the amount already looks. 
the missile show currently being put on uh, display. And a bunch of these already took damage, so I think it's a matter of time until those do get overwhelmed. Now, GC does pull back after taking out the land production, but it gets immediately primaried down by the uh, battleships. Meaning that it will probably die, most likely. The battleships have some ridiculous range, and never mind, it does survive, just about. But TPD that was split up will definitely go down because, well, there's no way to properly defend against battleships. Other than killing the battleship. Which is generally recommended with top bombers, but... Well, okay, we are currently still looking at a situation where that is doable. However, as soon as increased production of AA and stuff like that starts, then that is no longer a viable option. And especially for Seraphim battleships, those do have... Well, not amazing AA, but actually usable AA. And the flag on those is not that terrible compared, uh, compared to the AA on other battleships. Now, with the development on the beach area, apparently Kuba decides to move the ACU in uh, to the uh, beach slot as well. No, probably bad timing as there is a GC coming in from Folly to try and take that out. We do have a counter GC out from Nori, and uh, not from uh, Nori, Folly and Nori on the same team, uh, out from Resistance. Have a hard time with names, sorry about that. Um, and, well, Okay, the GSC for Folly does decide to pull back. And I think there... Yeah, there is definitely T2 land here in the area of asylums, uh, uh, asylums and Ascendants being built up. But I think I also saw some single Harbingers, yep. So also T3 land in the area. Which does make it really, really uh, difficult for the GSC to push in there now, uh, dealing, uh, dealing with both T3 land and a counter experimental. Another GC also under construction for resistance. And the Torrents now retargeting onto the defenses right here, as there is currently no major amount of Aeon TMD in the area, though that is currently in the process of changing, to defend against that. Meaning that those are a lot more likely to actually break through. To deal with the stuff up here, a battleship is probably the better option. But we now also see some aircraft carriers coming out through resistance, producing air by the looks of it. Meaning that there's also no longer a big chance to do anything with air right here because with in addition to being able to produce air, aircraft carriers are also really, really damn good air defenses. With some pretty good AA. No GC has started. This one about to finish. And never mind, that's actually a GC being built by uh, Protect right now. And not by Resistance. So, I guess three of the four players on the Northern team just currently being a nuisance on the beach area in the south. While the other player on the Northern team is the beach player that is currently trying to not die. With the ACU in a, well, ballsy position I'd say, already pretty damaged, getting a, uh, a bunch of shields and uh, with a stealthy generator to try and keep their commander safe. While being bombarded from battleships. Though, well, how safe that ACU is will uh, remain to be seen considering the fact that we do have a chicken Walking up onto land against the defenses that are wrecked right here. Mostly a bunch of miasmas pushed up with the help of shields, but the shields quickly collapse under constant fire of the battleships, partially due to the uh, way shields are implemented and the way shield regen works in this game, meaning that, um, which is that a shield needs some time without taking damage to regenerate. And with this amount of fire coming in, those shields don't get a chance to regenerate until they go down. 
And with the way that uh, she damage sharing works, meaning that a part of the damage um, done by the uh, done onto the top layer of a shield, being uh, gifted over or transferred to the lower part of the shield uh, to any lower uh, level shields as well. It's also not uh, those shields also just all collapse very sim uh, almost simultaneously or very close. And thus, yes, that base does collapse with the support of the uh, even faster with the support of the chicken. And that is now pushing up into the air grid of Protect. Bunch of skimmers, um, uh, of skimmer T1 bombers try to come in to help against that. Something that's very commonly seen when trying to deal with experimentals without having a proper counter. As T1 bombers are quickly spammed up, have a pretty decent um, one pass load, especially in large numbers. And if your opponent doesn't go as back too heavily into flag, you can still get a lot of damage done with those. Especially as, once again, they are relatively cheap, so you can easily just spam them up. And the big problem here is the flag that's now coming up, which quickly takes out the T1 bombers, meaning that they don't get too much um, damage done, and if those get, uh, if that flag gets in even closer, then I don't think the bombers will even be able to get in one pass as they will just be shot down before they can actually drop. Definitely not the situation you want right here. Now another chicken moves up to the front, but uh, now from Nori. About to make landfall. ACO for Aura and does pull back. And the land production has significantly increased for Nori. Now with T3 land production on the beach. Chicken right here does continue to push. Flag is now in front of the chicken, meaning that it will take out the bombers before they can properly reach it. Um, well, if they don't get distracted by the ASF that is. And the chicken will most likely make it into the airbase as there's currently nothing to really counter that. We do have a bank of T2 PD in the um, base for protect, but I'm not sure how much that will do against a, well, half HP chicken with four ranks of veterans and does 120 regen and significantly higher HP pool actually. And I would expect another rank of veterans now that it starts firing under the airbase because these pgens are very costly and the veterans you gain from taking those out will most likely be, a, uh, be enough to cause another rank of veterans and yes, there it is. Checking up to 5 ranks of veterancy, 145 regen, and currently 45,000 HP. And taking out the build power in the main base of protect after taking out basically the complete air grid. In the meantime, in the south, completely missed that, but push off both the land, uh, the produced land spam out from the uh, out from resistance and Kuba and the uh, GCs. The air grid or airbase for Folly does get uh, in a, um, well, very dangerous situation, currently being basically under siege. A very low HP GC was able to take out the GCs pushing into that, but there is there are another two GCs coming in, so I don't expect that to work out for too much longer. Forward air grid right here, or what usually is your forward air grid right there, also already taken out. So at this moment in time, fully in a very bad spot. The other thing we can see right here now, Aaron's ACU has been found and well, the Orphans have started locking onto that. Meaning that those do, and the dead ACU will go down very rapidly. And there it goes. The explosion does take out a few of the orphans, but doesn't make too much of a difference. In the meantime, the chicken does continue to, uh, continue to push. Most of the airbase up here did go down. Only leaving a singular T3 effect, but no HQ, so that won't do anything. Now the chicken pushes up. And protect is currently on the run from the chicken because, well, they are basically about to die. Due to that. 
but we do see a pretty similar situation developing on the southern um, uh, plateau, or on the southern plateau on the southern side. With GC is taking out the aircraft for folly, though, slightly later, and with that I'm pretty sure that... Well, never mind, folly does... I think ASF numbers might be equal. Currently 222, no, 224 with 2 ASF out of fuel for folly. Against... 316 for protect, so protect actually is still ahead. On ASF count, but we also now see a bunch of ASF coming out from Nori, so not sure how long if that will be. ACU for protect does make it into the water, where it will be safe from the um, chicken. Though with Orthoms being produced, that will definitely be a bit uh, of a bigger issue because Orthoms do. Have torpedoes, not amazing ones, but it's still torpedoes, and those will still kill an ACU, even though very slowly. Now, big uh, group of restorers out from resistance being utilized to try and deal with the uh, chicken um, that did push into the base of, uh, of resistance now, and definitely taking that out, but not before that chicken was able to also once again do a bunch of damage. 42k mass good. Not quite as effective as this 131k mass could. Or, um, well, but still more effective than the fresh one right here that's moving in, <laughs> taking out even more stuff. But also a bunch of battleships now just stationed under the beach slot to defend there, and... I just missed that, but apparently protected the site that they wanted to move out of the water to get away. Though the timing was a bit subpar as their um, ACU was to walking into the chicken that was still alive for Nori. In the meantime, Kuva made the decision to move the NCU back onto the onto their side of the map, getting up some factories right here, maybe to get reclaim. Not sure. And the battleships right here do now bombard the chicken for Nori that is taking out their uh, the base that they originally belonged to. In the meantime, down here, spam production, I think, almost increased for uh, resistance even more. Still on their crusade to eliminate all of the land, or all of the land holdings of the southern team. And let's see... Now chicken is still right here in the area, still alive. 45,000 mascot now. And the restorers are moving up north. Dealing with, I guess to deal with the stuff that is being built up to take over the uh, north map, or north part of the map. But we are now looking at the, uh, um, well, at a situation where basically both um, uh, the original islands for both teams are lost. More so for the northern team than for the southern team uh, right now, as Nori still has their main base. Though... There is HEC walking into that, so not for much longer. Folly making a ballsy play with um, double gun on the ACU, but without any survivability upgrades. Bunch of E-Storage. I guess the intention is to overcharge that. They do have, I think that's advanced nano, so they have a very potent overcharge. Uh, not very potent overcharge, a uh, very high e uh, energy production just from the ACU. And currently also building up a whole bunch of T2 PD, and uh, not T2 PD, not even T2, energy storages. They are also building up T2 PD, I guess this stuff is just what distracted me for a moment and confused me. But you know, I wanted to talk about the energy storage, so the overcharge will be rather effective. Possibly enough to deal with the GC, we will have to see. But main base for Nori does now end up going down. Let's see how does it look up here. Well. Maxes right here are being claimed and even upgraded to T3 on the beach uh, slot for the northern team. Uh, but yeah, basically both teams evicted from their original um, side of the map, being forced into exile onto the opposing side of the map. And well, going from there. Now T2PD fires into the um, GC, though not too effective. Folly decides to get in. 
now still with a bunch of East Arch, gets an overcharge, and I think that did do quite a bit of damage there. These East Arches, just another overcharge in. GC down to around 17k HP. Does try to target down fully, though targeting is not too effective. And last overcharge, that uh, GC does actually go down. So it did work out for Folly, though. Well, there is Harvin just moving in. And let's see, is there another GC moving in? Well, there's a bunch of T1 moving in. Wouldn't be surprised if there's also another GC being built and um, brought into the area. Yeah, there is, right here. And I don't think Folly can pull that off once again, for a second time. In the meantime, Chicken um, pushes this position. Kuba, realizing that they overstacked their welcome, um, is getting back onto the transport to pull out. No big problem, there is a bunch of lag in the area. However, the, um, uh, that transport does get there in time. It does get noticed by Nori, who does immediately uh, move their ASF in the area. But the Happy Knights to their um, uh, transport, not uh, no idea what the actual name of the transport is, but it's what it's named right now, uh, does pick up the ASU and seems to be getting into the safe area, with aircraft carriers now also moving up to screen. And I'm pretty sure the exact position of that is no longer scouted. Big ASF cloud for resistance moves in, takes out the Air Force of Nori, and thus the ACU for Kuba is, for, uh, is safe for the moment. Okay. But basically, stuff on the northern side, um, on the northern part of the map, now completely um, claimed by Nori. Any uh, significant uh, stuff has been taken out. And there goes the ACU of Folly. Going down to resistance, probably the GC, or maybe the Harbingers, not too sure. But the exact kind of stuff that I um, pointed out earlier that uh, would probably end up getting that ACU. In the meantime, Nori deciding to move their uh, ACU into their new home, onto the northern part of the map, where they have already started mass producing or mass building T3 P gens to get up Eco or uh, get their, eco, uh, their power production back up. And also, of course, the T3 Max I already pointed out earlier. Bunch of reclaim to be collected as well. And, well, probably... Well, okay, they are controlling a bunch of their factories. I guess since they no longer need them. Now with the uh, island basically unopposed, or uncontested. Not really an island. But, well, the northern uh, um, area, northern hemisphere, or something like that. Then they're going out for the AC of Nori in the meantime, I guess to prevent a snipe now as well. Neat part for Seraphim is that they get their RAS on the left arm, meaning that they can get a RAS, Nano, and T3, while the. Um, while Nano for. Well, while Raz for the other factions, well, for Aeon and Cyprin is on the back that they, uh, that those factions can't get survivability. UEF can, but UEF survivability upgrades aren't uh, as good as the advanced that are for the uh, Seraphim ACU. Now, battleships for Nori bombarding the um, army of resistance in the uh, southern rock slot. And I think at this point it is just fair to switch um, the uh, sides for the teams as well, with the developing, um, uh, with the uh, way that the teams set up shop on the uh, on the uh, other islands. T um, even T2 Air already out for Cuba now in the south with HQs. So let me introduce. We have Team uh, Two down in the south. No. Team 1 down in the south, Team 2 up in the top. On the southern team, in purple, we have Kuva Kli uh, Klima Kleber going Aeon. And in brown, Resistance also going Aeon. And on the north, on the northern team, Team 2, we have Nori going Seraphim in grey. 
That's it. That's the playoffs. Yeah, I know. Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I think it sounded funny in my head to uh, reintroduce the players with the redevelopment of new bases. Though honestly, it wasn't as funny. But uh, uh, but the HQs right here do go down to the GC, and so will the naval HQ right here most likely. So let's see. Any new HQ started up? North. Well, there's an SMD now being built up. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm definitely in the process of claiming all of this shit. Of course, already pointed out many times the Maxus. Uh, currently, no land HQ, though, uh, so the factories won't be able to keep producing. And yeah, of course, also no longer Navy HQ, meaning that there's no ability to make any more T3 Navy currently, or even T2 Navy out for Nori. On the other hand, at least the Navy part also applies to the Southbound team. And I am actually going to stick to this because it's much easier for me to uh, stick uh, to name the teams by their current position on the map, instead of the one where they started out as. So, yeah, just gonna do it this way. Uh, but the um, but the players of Team 1 actually do have some HQs down here. Kuba with T3 land, and the T2 air I already pointed out. Never mind, T3 air now. Bunch of these uh, ASF auto fuel, would be nice to see some air staging. Never mind, they already seem to be ahead of me because, look at that, air staging. Right, no, but they are all put to go onto this air staging, so that's why they aren't all just splitting up. The way you actually do it is just give your ASF patrol move orders in the uh, small patrols in the area, meaning that they w uh, so that they will just all split up onto the respective air staging. Or they might also just do that if they don't have proper orders. Not too sure. Not too sure air staging works properly. I. I generally like it, but it does feel a bit inconsistent at times. Oren pointing out that, they's, that those ASF need to be repaired. And I mean, some of those definitely do, but I think the refuel is more important here. Because most of them are just out of fuel. And air staging is also pretty good to refuel because refueling without air staging takes fucking ages. And with air staging, it's a thing of a few seconds. Well, not even a few seconds, something like a second. With a full repair being a few seconds. And I already mentioned that many times, it's something I like to point out. If you have big air forces, build air staging. You will, uh, it definitely does pay off for each uh, air fight you uh, fight, or you make. Because after each air fight, you can just easily repair your ASF with that, and this um, uh, your ASF will just gain, uh, will just be more survivable for each subsequent air fight, on average. Because well, they aren't pre-damaged, and they also will get more veterancy because they won't die as fast, which will actually improve their uh, their survivability in raw numbers, like in full HP numbers as well. And also, air staging is still cheap, especially uh, especially late game. It's something like 100 mass for an air staging facility. It's worth it. It does make such a big difference. It can make such a big difference. The other thing is also just the fast refuel makes it um, allows your AS uh, allows you to be more active with your ASF when utilizing them. Because I know the feel as an air player if you just constantly have your ASF moving around, um, uh, chasing from one side of the map to the other, uh, with sometimes little downtime to deal with stuff on both sides of the map, the fast review that you get with the air staging is just really, really useful to get your ASF or to keep your ASF at maximum or at high fuel numbers, meaning that they can just keep doing that. Now, on the southern pond, 
We have resistance now bombarding the uh, bases or the base structures of Nori, currently on the front base right here, with the turrets, which are now moving up back north, which does of course make sense. As once again, sides of the, uh, the sides of the map basically switched, and thus it is now necessary to utilize that stuff up there. Big wave of solace is coming out from resistance. I expect that those will be utilized to deal with the naval situation right here that is bombarding the uh, new, uh, the newly acquired base of Nori, and uh, not Nori of resistance, formerly Nori. Names. I already mentioned it um, earlier. I think I have a really hard time with names sometimes. But yeah, those um, solaces just target down the one battleship, and as you can see, Solus is very good at killing off battleships because they have an incredibly high alpha uh, strike. Well, no, they don't have an high alpha strike, but they just drop so many um, damn torpedoes that they can easily kill um, even the uh, tanky naval units like battleships. And also a very tanky meaning that they can easily deal with flag and uh, stuff. Because they can just tank through that. But yeah, you can see they all drop the, uh, those big pass uh, packages, which I think all split up into three torpedoes once they do properly make it down. Yep. And yeah, that is just a very, very large number of torpedoes, very hard to defend against. And thus, those battleships getting completely eviscerated. Now, how are things going? Well, Aircraft started in the airbase. Kuval apparently just committing to the rules that are uh, to the unwritten rules of sentence that a uh, that the airbase should be the place where the aircraft is supposed to be built. If you look up north, T3 air production also started up in the airbase for Nori, so even with an HQ there. So I guess both players respecting this unwritten rule. Nori complaining a bit about the um, uh, missile ships, and that's completely fair because if you look at that, it adds some incredible range that these missile ships get. Being able to hit far inland and cause, ma uh, cause massive damage that way. And if you look at that, it's a game ender. Nori is building a Yolana Oz on the. well, not even in their original base, or on their side of the map. Nori is building the uh, uh, Yolana Oz in the backline of the former, uh, in the backline that originally belonged to their enemy beach player. Not a thing you see too often. Do you now? Let's see, are there any counter to, um, game enders being built? Well, Resistance is going for a Paragon, so fair enough. Big problem here, I think the Paragon isn't as far along as the Yolana Oz. Also, Nori actually currently ahead on mass income. Never mind, I can't count uh, that looked like an 800 to me. The uh, Southern team is currently actually ahead on mass. But that is 42% done, let's see, how is the Yolana coming on? 62%, so that will most likely finish first. Meaning that those at a dead paragon will not be too useful. As two game and uh, as um, the paragon is useful when your opponent hasn't started a game ender yet, since it does give you the ability to build unlimited amounts of game enders and also all other units incredibly fast. Like, you can build game enders in a few minutes with that. A few short minutes due to their things getting up to 10k mass income. But the big problem, it does not fire back, so if you start it at the same time as the game ender of your opponent, it won't finish. Or it won't get value, because if your opponent scouts it, then they will target their game ender on it. And if they start their game ender first or at the same time, then that will most likely, then they will probably also finish at around the same time. At which you won't have your um, starvations um, up yet, or your 
uh, mass-produced game enders from the uh, Paragon. Meaning that it won't do you too much, uh, that won't be too effective for you. And so... I'm not sure, are they aware of the Yellow Nars being built? Yes, they are. Then, building Paragon is a uh, clear misplay right here. And they should have gone uh, either for something to directly uh, kill that, like a snipe or something like that, or if they really do intend to go for a game ender, then a salvation. Because, yeah, no. It's pretty clear that that Paragon is not going to finish in time to take out the Lonars. On the other hand, does um, uh, does Nori know of the Paragon? And yes, they do. So completely the um, so I think it's pretty obvious how this will now go after this. Resistance might be able to finish the Paragon. It's at seventy three percent, but. The Elana is thus finished and let's see, where's that new king? Can I already see the um, uh, targeting? No, I can't. If we zoom in on the minimap? No, no, I, wait, oh, right, orders don't even show up on the minimap. Right, yeah. That is a thing. Do I finally d actually d um, enabled the meshes or the um, the gold structures on the mini map that I usually that I had disabled till now, which are quite nice when you start zooming in on the mini map. I think they they were originally disabled because performance issues or something like that, but it's a game from 2007 and that would be uh, a big thing on your graphics um, uh, that would just take up graphic processing power, which really does not matter on modern hardware because. The big intensive part of the game that does even kill modern PCs is the CPU usage, because it's mostly single threat. As far as I'm aware, because, well, there's a bunch of problems you have when you use multi-threading on uh, uh, multiple stuff that needs to be synchronized. Basically, the fact that the threats need to f uh, that you have to, uh, something to make sure that you need to, something to make sure that both things are finished at the same time before starting the next thing, and that can be... that can also just slow down games. But anyway, YOLO is firing, and big thing about the YOLO, it does only hold one nuke, but it loads super fast. It is a game ender, and the other big thing is, it takes two missiles to shoot down. As you can see, the missile just uh, um, taking one. Take another one that flies a white arc and does that missile actually took three missiles. That's a very bad. And let's see, are the SMDs all loaded? No, they are not. These two still are. This one is as well. But I'm pretty sure, yep, these aren't, so the next YOLO will most likely hit and that Paragon will just die. It did actually finish, but I think it's not a big misplay that Resistance is going for multiple salvations right now. They should, if they want to try that, they should probably focus down the salvations, uh, their build power onto one salvation. Though getting some SMDs loaded and getting more SMDs up would be the actual play right here. But insufficient SMD means YOLO lands, and there goes the uh, just slow death of everything surrounding it. Possible to say Paragon survives, but no, it doesn't. And with that, that um, salvation is building, uh, should be building very slowly now as soon as resistance runs out of mass. They are already heavily uh, mass stored. Uh, fully saying that this is a fair outcome considering the only um, way it was set up and I mean, I want to point out, my prediction of how the game balance went was actually pretty accurate. We have the control K out from resistance. I think there was a snipe attempt at the YOLO though, because I think I just saw a few bombers. We do have a big air fight, so I expect that that was just stopped by that. But that gets noticed, that gets shot down. Air fight ensues, as, you, as we just saw. 
and I'm pretty sure the air fight even goes in favor of Nori. And Yolo continues to fire down now. And there's the control K out from Kuva, and with that, this game does end at just below one hour. After some pretty chaotic base watching, uh, base switching, I guess. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this cast. This was streamed live on Twitch. Link to that will be, as per always, down in the description. If you did enjoy it, leave a like or don't. I can't force you. And if you want to be notified when more videos like these do come out, you can always subscribe. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you again in a future cast. And to then, bye.